Hi and welcome to another Cheeky Girl Creations DIY video. So today I will be sharing with you a painting of a prickly pear cactus. And I'm using Winsor Newton Cotman watercolours, I believe that's the pocket sketchbook size and I'm using a Wilco's watercolour pad which is 180 GSM and that um, painting I'm showing you there I did at the beach a couple weeks ago um, in the first May bank holiday which is why I don't have a video of that but I thought I would film this process. So I'm starting off by wetting the um, section first and I'm going to go section by section <clears throat> sorry, um, so that the water doesn't dry too quickly and I get a nice blend. And at the moment I'm going into a section that's touching the one I just painted but you will see that I jump from section to section to prevent bleeding between um, each part of the cactus, I'm not sure what you would call those parts. Um, and I'm using Viridian for the main colour of the cactus. So I'm just really doing like block colours at first and I'm going and I'm doing quite a light layer because I don't really want it to be too dark since I will be adding shading later on. And I'm using a brush by C White. I think it's a size 8 I believe. So you can see now I've gone over to the next section instead of doing the one right next to the one I just painted to prevent any bleeding. And again a very light layer and I'm trying to keep all the brush strokes pointing downwards um, just so it looks a little bit better. And now I'm jumping over to the next section. So you'll see me do that throughout the whole painting. But you will see me constantly make a mistake of starting with the main like base part of the cactus. Um, which would cause problems and I'll show you later. It wasn't too much of a problem but I just want to mention that so that you don't make that mistake. Um, so now I'm just going to do the other sections. And I sketched this using a watercolour pencil. It was a grey pencil so that when um, I add water, of course it's a watercolour pencil so it'll blend right in. But I didn't want to use a dark pencil because I didn't want that to affect the colour I was using when I was painting this cactus. And as you can see, as I'm painting the sections, I am making little adjustments because I did want them to be quite rounded. I didn't want them to be too straight. So you'll see me um, constantly make adjustments as I go along. And the watercolour pencil I use, I think was from WH Smith. I've had them for like ever. Um, I only really do use them for sketching when I'm going to paint. Um, in watercolours. If I'm painting in acrylics, I just tend to use a regular pencil. I'm not too bothered when it comes to that. So all of that is filled in, which means I can start adding shadows. So you'll see how I do that first. And I'm starting with that section first because that's behind. So when I do the next section, that'll be in front and it then won't, the lines would look a little bit better instead of say doing that bottom one which I think I do in this part. I'll have to wait and see. So you can see I'm just adding um, shading to one part of it and then blending out. So you see I'm doing that in the front one but I should have waited to do that last and until I did the um, like the other row on the other side. But that's all right. Um, I'll fix that later. So yeah, I'm just adding shading on one side, then blending it out to add some depth. And you'll see I it's a, I struggle just a little bit um, on the smaller ones, but it all turns out lovely at the end. And I did struggle a little bit with these watercolors. I have had them for a while, but for a while they were lost, not properly lost because then I found them in a spot I pretty sure I looked many times. It was looking at me straight in the eye, but I didn't see it. So it's been quite a few months since I've used these watercolors. I've been having to use some cheaper, more like student quality um, watercolors. So I've gotten out of practice with these. So it was quite tricky painting that other painting I did a little while ago. And then this one. So it was a bit more of a learning curve for me, but I'm really happy how it turned out despite all that. 
So I'm just blending, blending, and I'm trying to not use too much water because I don't want it to be like too wishy-washy. I do want it to be quite strong. And I want, I, I really want to be able to see that depth. I didn't want it to be too watered down. So I'm almost done adding my shading. And in a little bit, you'll see me kind of scrubbing off some color on the side I didn't add shading, just to add a little bit more highlights. So there we are, I'm just scrubbing off some of that color. And I could have used a firmer brush, but I didn't want to do too much of a harsh um, highlight since I will be going in and adding highlights later on as well. So I'm just taking off some of the color there while everything's not just dry. And what you don't see on video is me letting things dry quite a bit. So, which is why I'm doing the pot now. I wanted my cactus to dry before I went in and added anything else. So for the pot, I'm using Burnt Sienna at first, just to add the base. Um, afterwards, you can see I kind of veered off and added some more colors. And I'll use Burnt Umber. Yes, Burnt Umber for the dirt, but that comes a little bit later. And I'm just using that flat brush there. I believe that's a sea white brush as well. Not sure what size that is though. Um, just to add that since um, it has straight edges and I'm terrible at doing straight lines. So I figured I would just use a flat brush. And you can see me flipping it there because sometimes when I'm trying to do something like a pot and make it as symmetrical as possible, it's easier to flip something upside down. So now I'm adding the prickles to my cacti. Again, using Viridian. I only use Viridian for the cacti, um, just so that there wasn't too much color coming in and just kept on adding more layers to make it darker. So I'm just kind of dabbing the paper with the paintbrush, like the tip of it, but you will see me go in and make them a little bit stronger later on. So I'm just gonna add prickles all over are my cactus and I'm just zooming in there so you can see so you can see on the first part and I did do that first but that wasn't too much of a problem since I was just adding prickles in the inside of that section it's a little bit smaller but I will go in and make them stronger so I think I'm just yeah I'm just making my paintbrush a little bit juicier because now I've realized that those small prickles just weren't doing it for me and I needed to make it a little bit stronger and when I was like dotting it on, I was kind of wiggling the brush as well. So it wasn't a perfect dot. Um, I didn't want it to look perfect. I wanted it to look a little bit more organic and natural. So as I'm going in doing that, I thought I would just let you know that my June box themed fun with fibers, which means it'll be quite different this month. Um, well, this month coming, uh, is now launched and available via my Ticktail site. So all those links um, to the box is in the description below. And at the moment you can pre-order it, which means that you will get it. It will be posted on the 15th. So you'll get it after the 15th of June. And yeah, so check that out. And you can also see some of my previous um, unboxing videos for my previous boxes in the iCard in the top right hand corner as well as some of the previous boxes, if you follow the other link in the description below, if you're into that. So please do check that out if you would like to grab yourself a box. So now you can see I'm just making the um, prickles a lot stronger and a little bit more messy looking, which I really liked. Um, I liked how that turned out very much. And you can see how I'm just kind of wiggling the brush while adding that. Oh, and while I'm doing this as well, please do check out my social media pages and join my Facebook group because I would love to see your creations. If you do anything with the box or if you watch any of my videos and it um, inspires you to do something, please do share on my Facebook group and tag me on Instagram if you're on there as well. I would love to see your creations. So now I'm adding prickles to the edge of the cactus as well as adding an outline again using just viridian i didn't really want to use too much pen i do do that a lot to add detail but i thought i'm i would start challenging myself to not do that and i have done that on uh, my previous like mini cacti paintings and i will put that in an eye card in the top right hand corner as well for you to see so yeah, I'm just adding those um, prickles on the side as well as an outline, which has really made everything pop. 
And you can see the difference between the sections that have the prickles and the outline on the outside to the sections that don't. They just look really nice. And again, not small ones. I'm doing kind of like big, small, big, small to add a little bit of variation just so it doesn't look as if it's planned out. And you can see in a few areas, I have left a big gap where there's no prickles on the outside, but that's because I will be adding flowers to some areas on the cactus as well, which I'll start doing soon, I believe. So I'm just finishing off on those outlines. You can see I'm doing a bit of adjustment on that section. Wasn't too happy with the shape. So I added some adjustment with that outline as well as making those prickles a bit stronger. And you can see I'm doing these like smaller sections before I do the big one in the front because I realized if I did that, then you can really see that it is in the foreground and the others are in the background. And I'm sorry, I'm a bit out of frame there. I didn't realize when I was doing that. Sometimes I get in the flow of things and forget I'm filming all together. Right, so all those prickles are done. It's time to add those flowers. Now I'm, add, I'm using a dark red. I really can't remember the name of it right now and I do apologize. Um, if you have that watercolor set, then you'll have that color. So you can see it's quite dark because I had used it, I think in my previous cactus painting, um, which the photos will be at the end of the video. Can't remember if I mentioned that, as, as well as this cacti I'm painting here. I think I got some, um, Othello blue in there so it looks kind of purpley and you will see that I do add some blue to kind of like mask that and make it all go together but I really didn't like how that looked but you'll see how I fix that later I made sure and kept that in just to show you guys it doesn't matter how experienced you are and how often you do this you still make mistakes and you just have to figure it out as you go along sometimes and when I'm doing the flowers, I do kind of just dab my brush a little bit just to add some like texture around to show that there's petals. Um, I don't really just kind of, oh, I don't know how to explain it. But yeah, I just do just dab my um, flower, my paintbrush when I'm doing flowers. And I'm adding some as well where I hadn't planned to because I had sketched in some, but you'll see, I think more around like the smaller ones where I had put prickles, but then I realized I needed some more flowers. And I like things to be in a, not an even number, an odd number, that's it. I was trying to figure out the word. So that's why you see I have five flowers and I think I add two more, but I always make sure I have an uneven number. I like that when I'm painting something. So now I'm adding the dirt using burnt umber and again I'm dabbing my brush to add that texture of uh, mud and I'm just I am going quite a little bit bigger because sometimes I just have to adjust that when I'm doing the pot um, just depending on how I want that and I did go over the bottom of the cactus a little bit just so it looks like it is in a pot and it is in the dirt I didn't want it to look like it was floating above there so I make sure and dab some brown over there. And here I am darkening the flowers, which I really didn't like. Um, it was just too dark for me. And there we are, I'm adding some extra flowers. And you can see at the moment I have six, was not happy with that. So I had to add a seventh flower because I'm just strange like that. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm just adding that. And some are bigger, some are smaller, depending on how big that section of the cactus is. So now I'm going to go in and tackle the pot and the pot took a lot of fiddling a lot of faffing to try to figure out what I wanted and so at the moment I'm just adding a darker layer because it's just too light at the moment for me and I thought I would just have it plain with no kind of pattern and just like add some shading I have done that on one of my mini cactus paintings but you could, you'll see later on that actually I don't stick to that and I do add a pattern. So you see, I could have probably stopped there, but I never know when to stop. So you'll see me adding a pattern there. Did not like that at all. So I just went over and covered that up very quickly before it dried. And I had to let that dry. So this is now when I'm adding the blue. And I really didn't like that. This is the point where I just thought, Oh my gosh, why isn't this working? So 
off camera I just went over that with some white watercolor and I'm letting that dry while I figure out the pot so I'm going in with that dark red I use for the flowers and I'm using that same red because I will go in with the red again and I'm trying to use a more limited palette so that everything looks a little bit more cohesive so I'm trying my best not to add like too much color instead um, because sometimes I just just add all the colors and it looks a little bit too um, bright and a little bit overdone so I'm just trying to limit the palette a little bit and also challenge myself in doing that so I'm using the red to add the detail and you will see as it dries it does kind of blend in but I do bring that pattern out a little bit later um, using some white watercolor and you'll see how I do that a little bit later so I'm just kind of mirroring the pattern I've made at the top by adding that thick banner then adding some more scallops and I've also gone um, added some lines like in between the scallops I thought that would look quite nice so then I'm just doing that and I am going in quite thickly with that red watercolor just so it to stand out because by this stage the burnt sienna <clears throat> sorry was quite um, dark and I'm adding some circles in there because I thought it looked kind of plain and then some dots and I was really liking how that looked, but it did blend in a lot, which is why I'll go in and bring that pattern out a little bit. So now I'm, I'm adding a touch of the red onto the white, which will make it a little bit lighter. And I'm not adding any blue this time at all. So now I'm adding some white highlights, again using some white watercolour. Um, and this will kind of blend in a little bit, but it does stand out quite a lot. I mixed it quite thick so that it would stand out and it wouldn't just fade into the color. And now I'm, you can see I'm bringing out that pattern and I'm really happy how the pot actually turned out. I was very happy with that. Adding a little bit more details using that white. And I know um, like professional artists and stuff don't use a lot of white watercolor. And I didn't before, I just kind of thought that it was pointless because it wasn't very strong, but in um, areas when I need to cover something up like the flowers or something like this when I want to bring out the detail detail but I don't want it to be too stark I want it to be kind of subtle when it dries it's absolutely perfect so don't completely shun your white watercolor it does come with a use so you can see like where it's drying there with the highlights it's kind of subtle but Again, it adds another layer. I'm also adding some white to the flowers there to dull them down a little bit, since the Viridian is kind of light. And um, I will go in and add some stronger highlights with my Uniball Signo pen in a little bit. So now I'm using my liner brush and I cannot tell you how much I love these liner brushes. I got three different sizes from Hobbycraft when they had this like art sale. And oh my word, it helps so much, it has such a beautiful point and it's a small point as well. And it's so much easier to add detail now. So you can see I'm able to add some nice small details to my flowers. I'm sorry I'm a bit out of frame there. Um, Again, forgot I was filming. And yeah, it's just, oh, I love this liner pen. I'm, I'm not liner pen, liner brush. I'm using it in watercolors, I'm using it in acrylics. Um, I have a video coming out soon where I use it in acrylics and I just love it. So I'm making sure to actually look after this brush because I don't want it to get ruined anytime soon. So again, adding some darker um, lines because I just kind of thickened up the mix of red watercolor. And now I'm adding some highlights using that white watercolor again because I wanted a little bit of a subtle highlight before I added my Uniball Signo um, gel pen for highlights and you can see it did dry quite bright on the pot so I'm really happy with that so let's see what am I doing now ah okay time to add some highlights with my Uniball Signo so you can see how much brighter that is and this is the broad pen so it get, adds quite strong lines so I am going in kind of sketchy so it doesn't like overpower everything and I'm adding these little like pebbles to the pot um I always see see succulents and cacti and I surrounded by pebbles and stuff in their pots so I thought I would add that as well and I'm going in and adding some stronger highlights on my cacti and water and flowers and I'm also going I'm 
adding highlights to the prickles but I'm not doing dots I am doing like really short lines so as I zoom in you'll be able to see that so this is pretty much it for the video I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed creating this cactus it was super fun and I'll definitely have to do this again and yeah so if you did please do give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already it really helps and please do click that bell next to the subscription button so that you get notified whenever I upload a video um, so that you can always keep in check. Don't forget to follow me on my social media accounts. All those links are below as well as the links for the mixed media subscription boxes, both previous and the June box, which you can pre-order on my TikTok site. So thanks again for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and please join me again for another arty video. Bye.